All right, guys, Man United have just beaten Leicester by a goal to nil at the King Power. And once again, it, it was a very similar Man United performance to the previous couple of games against Southampton and Liverpool. One where they didn't really dominate in possession, didn't create loads of chances, um, and were on the back foot for, for portions of the game. But at the same time, never actually looked like they were going to concede really um, and had very few moments where they actually gave chances to the opposition team so you can say it's a defensively solid performance again from Man United but not the most um, not the most threatening attacking performance uh, ever but if you're winning and you're keeping clean sheets, you're doing something right. So there, there's definitely positive. Well, they, they've won three on the back. So there's 100% positives to take away from this for Man United. Um, for Leicester, it, it's, an, it's another game where they they didn't start off quick enough. They, they were very slow that last uh, in the first half and created virtually no chances. Second half, they again they they didn't create loads of chances, um, but they 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 were better definitely in the second half. Um, but most of the chances came from set pieces really, which is not really what you want to see as a Leicester fan because over the past few years that that their, their uh, threatening attacks have come from counter-attacks with players like James Madison, uh, Harvey Barnes and Jamie Vardy up front, uh, Kelechi and Acho as well. But it's just not happening for them this season. So far they've picked up, uh, I think they've picked up, it's either one or two points, I can't remember. I think they've only picked up one point because they've lost to United, Southampton, Chelsea and someone else as well. So, yeah, Arsenal, it's, it's the only point they've picked up was against Brentford on the opening weekend. So, yeah, it's looking really bad for them at the moment. And I think Brendan Rodgers' job is probably very much under threat right now. Um, because it, it, in, in the second half, they, they had a few players who looked really good. Keane in Dewsbury Hall and James Madison, they, they were both... Uh, looking quite sharp. Harvey Barnes as well didn't play too badly, but they've also just got players who are too slow on the ball, um, like ponderous at times. And also Jamie Vardy is, isn't is looking like his usual self so far this season. I personally don't think. Um, I, I think tonight it was more down to the style of defending that United used in um, like trying to stay deep and compact. That really doesn't suit Vardy at all, as we know. He thrives on uh, having space to run into, which uh, Lissandro Martinez and Rafael Varane didn't give him any of. So, yeah. But, yeah, United's defence, once again, looks incredible. Ty Tyrell Malasia, Lissandro Martinez and Varane Dallo even all, all had great games. Uh, I think three of them picked up yellow cards. I think it was only Varane who managed to avoid the yellow card. Um the, the only negatives I can think of for United defensively were that they were that they did give away free kicks quite easily on the edge of the area because James Madison did have a couple of opportunities. But other than that, they defended very well. And when Casemiro came on the pitch with about half an hour to go, um, he, he just completely bossed the midfield, I think. He, he is... It's world class player. I think we all knew that before we joined Man United, but signing him is is definitely uh, not going to harm them at all. I, I think that is uh, fair to say. Um, J Jason Sancho and Marcus Rashford again linking up very well this season. It, it's that that's one of the attacking positives for United. Um, especially with Rashford down this uh, down the centre, I think that is where his best position might be from now on because there, there was a period where Rashford just didn't look comfortable down the middle but um, with the right players around him I, I think that is his best position because from the left over the past 18 months or so he, he really hasn't looked sharp at all um, he, he, in fact at times he's looked about as sharp as Leicester's performance tonight 
Uh, it was very blunt. Um, but yeah, with, with Elanga and Sancho either side and Bruno Fernandes behind him, he does look very good. Cristiano Ronaldo came on for the last 20 minutes of the game and nearly did score a uh, brilliant overhead kick, went just wide. Uh, but yeah, but if we analyse the uh, Leicester goal, it, it came from a long goal kick from Danny Ward. But then you see Luke Thomas and um, James Justin, both full-backs, pushing, whoops, pushing far, far too far forward and basically isolating um, Johnny Evans and Wilfred Ndidi at the back. And first of all, stop it there. Wilfred and Deezy at the back when you've got Kagla Soyuncu on the bench. Now, I've always felt with Soyuncu that last season he, he, he was very poor. But for large parts of last season, he didn't have Johnny Evans alongside him. He was mostly playing alongside either Daniel Amate or Yannick Vestergaard, who are both average at best. Vestergaard was poor, but Amate isn't really a centre-back. He's more of a... He's, he's just a utility player for Leicester, really. But with Johnny Evans back, I, I, I think surely the best option is to have Soyuncu alongside him, because that, that was the centre-back pairing that Leicester had so much success with in the season. Um, that in the both seasons, they were pushing for the top four. And so, uh, yeah, I... I can't understand that really. Um, I think Rogers is probably best off giving Soyuncu another chance alongside Johnny Evans because that did work really well. And then also what that means is you can push Wilfred and Didi back into midfield into where he is one of the best defensive midfielders in the world and has shown that over the past three or four or five years. So yeah, doesn't make sense to me at all, especially when Bukakari Samaro has been, let's be honest, Average at best for Leicester since he joined the club from Lille um, last summer. And yeah, I, so whenever Simare and Tielemans play together in midfield, you, you never have any confidence in Leicester because Simare, he, he's he's good, but he, he's, he's, he doesn't seem to... Um, he doesn't have the knack of being in the right place at the right time that Wilfred indeed he seems to have. And when you've got Yuri Tielemans alongside him, Tielemans is a player who is technically good, but he's not a player who is going to run through brick walls for you. So they they don't work as a, as a pairing. There's there's not enough um, energy or like closing down on opposition players, especially when they haven't got the ball. So indeed, he is very much needed in that Leicester midfield when they've got Tielemans along along. Sorry, when they've got Tielemans on the pitch. Um, but yeah, that they, they, they need to give Soyuncu enough go, in my opinion. But back to the goal. Um, Evans and, and Didi were both isolated and you've got a three-on-one. Um, Luke Thomas is desperate to get back to Alanga uh, and try and get, like, put a tackle in. Alanga did really well to spot the space in the first place. But he plays it through to Rashford, he slides it through to Sancho, he takes it around the goalkeeper and it, it was a really well-worked goal and a really composed finish from Sancho, um, which I don't think we saw from him last season. He does seem to be a little bit more relaxed in front of goal, um, especially again in, in that game uh, against Liverpool where he had the composure just to uh, let James Melder dive and try and block the, block a shot but he didn't even shoot in the end and then he and even sent Allison the wrong way so in the end he, he just had Virgil van Dijk um, to put the ball past in virtually an empty net so yeah United they've got Arsenal on Sunday that'll be a big test because over the past few games uh, the win against Liverpool was a great result, but I, I think it's fair to say Liverpool weren't at their best in that game. Again, the same against Southampton. Southampton are a good side this season, so that was another good result, especially away from home. Tonight's game was against a poor Leicester side, so you expect them to win tonight. But Arsenal on Sunday is going to be a massive test um, at home as well, so that they'll be they'll be hoping to get at least a point out of it. Um, yeah, anyway, United are looking good at the moment. I'm not going to 
claim that they're going to be title challenges come the end of the season. I'm expecting them to have rough patches throughout the season. Um, Leicester, they're, they're look in real trouble at the moment. One point out of 15 is a terrible start to the season for them. But anyway, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.